Hey everybody, this video is called Hey You Rebels, and tonight we're going to continue our pass-through study here in the book of Numbers, looking at the 14th chapter, where we're going to look at Israel rebelling against God still, as they left off in chapter 13 at Kadesh Barnea. So, let's open with the first verse. It says, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. So all of Israel is mourning here because of the circumstances they find themselves in. And the ten spies, they represent the heart of the nation of Israel at this point. Israel was full of unbelief. And they are in rebellion through their mourning. And in verse 2 it says, And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if we only... We had died in this wilderness. So Israel just wished they were dead. They didn't care if they were dead in the wilderness or Egypt. They just did not want to be in the circumstances that they were in. And their complaints here, even though they think they're directing their complaints toward Moses and Aaron, their true complaint is really against God here. And don't worry though, this rebellious generation is going to get what they asked for. In verse uh, 3 and 4, it says, Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. So Israel here is accusing the Lord of sin and evil towards them. And what a pity thing for these people to be angry at God and to say such a thing, accusing God of plot and murder against them and their families. And what a rebellion to call your God evil who can do no evil. We know that God cannot be tempted by evil. God cannot lie. God cannot sin. And Israel is back into their slave mentality as they're rejecting the two spies that are being faithful and honest, that are encouraging them to walk in faith. They're rejecting these spies that are calling them to walk in faith. And they rejected God's plan as they thought they knew better than God. And these faithless people were ready to reject the leader that God has given them through Moses. And how many times with us, when, when we are not comfortable with the way God is bringing us, we like to we like to go do an about face and go in our own direction at times. And verse uh, 5 through 9 says, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Zephunah, who were among those who had spied out of the land, tore their clothes and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. So verses 5 through 9, Moses and Aaron knew that it was time for them to fall on their faces in prayer, that the nation of Israel is in major trouble. And the two faithful spies here, Joshua and Caleb, they attempted to persuade the people as they were the optimistic young men, that they, they, they were trying to persuade the people to turn away from their unbelief and to place their faith in God. So we see that they enter into a grief and mourning state when they see how the people react. So they tear their clothing. And they reminded the people of God's faithfulness to his promises. And God promised the land would be good and theirs in possession. And they call Israel to lay down their rebellion, to turn away from their rebellious ways and turn away from their unbelief and to just trust in the Lord. And they're encouraging them to return to the Lord in their trust. And in verse 10 it says, And all the congregation said to stone them with stones. 
Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. So in response to the people's violent rejection of Joshua and Caleb's challenge, we see that God appears to them in glory. And rebellious and carnal men cannot endure the men of faith who came with the challenge of faith. And many times we see that even among professing Christians, that you try to encourage them in their walks to, you know, to grow and to step in the faith with God. And sometimes they want to they want to stone you. Uh, verse 11 and 12 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me, and how long will they not believe me? With all the signs which I have performed among them, I will strike them with the pestilence and then disinherit them, and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. So they failed to believe the Lord. They failed to trust and to rely on the Lord their God. And they, they failed to trust in God and His power to give them the land of Canaan as God had promised them in spite of of God showing him that he's done miracles before, that God gave them signs. And in Exodus 32, verses 9 through 10, God threatened to wipe out the people and start over again with Moses. And this justifiable threat showed the seriousness of which God took on their rebellious state. And God speaks to Moses as he knows Israel is past hearing him. That he knows that Israel is totally shut him out. And what's amazing here is when we look back, we know that God has been amazing. And God has been good and faithful to Israel countless times. And Israel goes on to reject God. And it should make no sense, but... Honestly, how many times has God been good to us and then we turn around and reject, you know, him because we're not happy with something? In verse uh, 13 through 16, it says, And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it, for by your might you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them, and you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people to the land which he swore to give them, therefore he killed them in the wilderness." So as in Exodus chapter 32, verse 11 through 13, Moses once again intercedes for Israel. To, and he's interceding in the way to tell God that, tell, he's telling God to protect his reputation with the Egyptians who would go on to charge the Lord with inability to complete his deliverance of Israel. And thus, they would deny his power. And then he gives a second thought that the Lord's loyal love was the basis on which the Lord could forgive his people. He knows that God's love is amazing, that God has been merciful many, many times. In verse uh, 17 through 19, says, And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiven in equity and transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the inequity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the inequity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. So Moses, he gives glory in the power of God, but he asks that God would use his power by showing mercy to Israel and long-suffering, even though Israel was a rebellious people. And verses 18 and 19 is almost a quote of the words of the self-revelation 
God spoke to Moses in the dramatic encounter with Moses back in Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 through 8. And Moses here, he's basically saying, Lord, your word declares who you are. Lord, please act toward Israel according to how you have declared yourself in your word. So Moses is here. He's, go, he's going on to intercede for Israel. And in verse uh, 20, it says, And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. So Moses' intercession was successful in his prayer. And his prayer mattered. In verse 21 through 25, But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory in the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tamal turn and move out into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. So God's response to Israel would be full of his glory and reflective as he would go on to show mercy and pardon in such a way that was consistent with his glory, with his promise. And those who put God to the test in rebellion against his promises would not get to see the land. They wouldn't get to live, but only the faithful. And like Caleb, so Caleb and Joshua, they were faithful. And in these verses, we see at the high praise heaped upon Caleb, as he was richly rewarded despite he was being rejected by Israel. And because Israel rebelled against God, he sends them back into the wilderness. In verse uh, 26 through 35, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complains against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my heart, or my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness, all of you who are numbered according to your entire number, from twenty years old and above, except for Caleb, the, John, uh, the son of Zephaniah, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You shall by no means enter the land which I swore. I would make you dwell in. But the little ones whom you said would be victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and your sons shall be the shepherds in the wilderness forty years, and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness." According to the number of the days in which you spied out of the land, forty days for every day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely forty years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. So, some pretty hard verses here to swallow but the lord granted the israelites their wish as their judgment was to die in the wilderness and so on they go on to die in the wilderness but we see that their children would be brought into the promised land by god and the present generation of rebels would die in the wilderness until 40 years was completed and the 40 years was calculated as one year for each day that the spies were in Canaan. So Joshua and Caleb 
were exceptions as they've had faith and they pleased God with their faith. And not even Moses or Aaron were exceptions as Moses wasn't guiltless in this whole tragedy as he agreed to send out the spies instead of just trusting in taking the land by faith. And the psalmists speak about this passage in Psalm 95, verse 7 through 11, Psalm 106, verse 24 through 27, and also in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 16 and 17. In verse 36 through 38, wrapping up the chapter, it says, Now the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Zephunah remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. And that's not the end of the chapter. There's still a few more verses to go over here. But the death of the ten unfaithful spies was to be immediate, unlike the unbelieving generation and they would die by the plague so now we're going to finish the verses here 39 through 45 it says then moses told these words to all the children of israel and the people mourned greatly and they rose early in the morning went up to the top of the mountain saying here we are and we will go up to the place which the lord has promised for which for we have sinned and Moses said, Now why do you transgress the command of the Lord? For this will not succeed. Do not go up, lest you be defeated by your enemies, for the Lord is not among you. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword, because you have turned away from the Lord. The Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up to the mountaintop. Nevertheless, neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that mountain came down and attacked them and drove them back as far as Horma. So Moses tells them what was going to happen here, and they mourned, and they wanted to make things better through their works, hoping to reap some sort of blessings, and they made an attempt in the flesh to accomplish what they had rejected by faith. They were going to try it on their own strength, and it ended up in defeat, unfortunately. And when God was with them, they didn't think it was enough. And now that, now that God wasn't with them, they thought they could do it. And they attacked the Amalekites in the hill country, and they were defeated. So it's a very sad ending here to chapter 14. But there's many principles that we need to reflect on when we go through this passage. So we looked at the rebellion of Israel at Kadesh Barnea as Israel rebels by mourning at their difficult situation between unbelief and faith. And they rebelled as they complained and they were angry, angry at God. And yes, you know, sometimes life uh, situations and life experiences might make you feel angry at God. And it's wrong to assume or imply that these failings are justified as God owes us nothing. God doesn't owe us anything but wrath and judgment. And remember how the Apostle Paul describes us in Romans 3 verse 9 through 18. I challenge you to check out those verses. You know, there is none that are good. There is none that do good. None seek after God. And so Israel rebelled by longing for the past of Egypt. So sometimes in our unbelief, we like our comfort space. And we know things from the past. We can find comfort in those because we know what to expect. We don't like going into unknown movements. And Israel's rebellion was man-centered. We see the reaction of the godly against the rebellion of the people. And we see the response of the people in God to appeal and to, in God to the appeal of Joshua and Caleb. And we see God's charge against 
Israel, and we see the offer to Moses as God says he would bring judgment upon the rebellious nation. And Moses interceded for Israel as he appealed to God's glory, and he appeals to God's power and promise. And we see God's promise of pardon in response to the intercession of Moses. And so, one thing that we should get out of the passage is that prayer matters. Moses' prayer mattered. And we should pray as if we are in a life or death situation, heaven or hell would be decided on our by our prayers. We should have a deep zeal, zeal when we pray. And yes, God is sovereign, but he wants us to pray to him. And we see the fate of the rebels and the faithful. And the rebels should expect the death sentence. And let's go over to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. And another thing, if you don't get out of anything else in today's video, faith matters. But we're going to look at chapter 3, verse 7, and we're going to carry into chapter 4. So it says, Hebrews 3, 7, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me, and saw my works forty years, therefore I was angry with that generation, and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Be aware, brethren, lest there be any, in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold to the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who haven't heard rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? But to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And uh, instead of reading chapter 4, I'm, I'm challenging you to check out chapter 4 for yourself here. But God has a place of rest and promise for every believer. And the only way to enter that rest and promise is through faith. And the man of unbelief, self-reliance, and self-focus can never enter into God's rest. And abundance and the death sentence among the di disobedient disobedient spies was immediate and the chapter wraps up in failure to attempt of taking the promised land by man's strength and wisdom and one last point we can't miss is they fell under apostasy as they failed to believe the Lord and to take the promised land. And their lack of faith was an open rebellion against the Lord. And when we live in unbelief, when we don't have faith, we are acting in rebellion to the Lord because He has called us to faith. And we'll see you next on Friday as we're going to look at the laws concerning the offering. So I hope you have a great rest of your night. God bless. We'll see you Friday.